did. You found the correct elevation for your rifle at 200 yards to be only four clicks. But that was with the imaginary rifle we were dealing with, mind you. Now, with your rifle, you may find the zero to be seven, 12, or 15 clicks. Whatever the number is, be sure that your elevating knob is set that many clicks from the bottom. Then, loosen the screw you see there in the middle of the elevating knob. Move the scale so that it's set for 200. Tighten the screw again and be sure it's tight. If it's not, you'll lose your elevating knob. That's how you set your correct 200 yard elevation for keeps. But remember, that's for 200 yards only. You have to zero separately for 300 and 500 yards. All of your zeros are important. Let me say it again. Write them in your scorebook and learn them by heart. That scorebook can be a lot of help to you if you use it right. Look through it. If you get rusty on the elevation and windage rules, here they are, with tables and examples that show you how they work. Here are the dimensions of A and B and D targets. Here are windage diagrams too. They show the correct allowances to make for winds of various velocities all around the clock for the two, three, and 500 yard ranges. But I don't want you to get the habit of depending on the book for wind allowances. Shooting at target is only your training for the bigger job you'll be doing later. And you don't take a scorebook into combat. First of all, of course, the scorebook is for keeping track of your scores and how you made them. Turn to the rifle recording sheet. Take one that's headed 200 and 300 yards, slow fire recording sheet. And I'll go through it and show you how to use it. All right, play. Give the name of your post, camp, or station, in this case, Fort Benning. Then, today's date. The hour, wind velocity, say 10 miles, from seven o'clock. The light is bright. Weather, warm. Range, 200. And you'll do your first firing from the prone position. You'll fill in all those spaces before you go to the firing line. Okay, let's say you're ready to begin zeroing. For 200 yards, you'll start with 10 clicks of elevation. Turn your elevating knob all the way down. Then up 10 clicks. Now for windy. You've got a 10 mile wind from seven o'clock. That's two for 200 yards, times 10 for the wind velocity, divided by 10, which gives you two. But you only take half of that for seven o'clock, which is one. One click left windage because the seven o'clock winds from your left. Write these settings down. Position, sight picture, trigger squeeze, all correct. So, you fire your first shot. You call a center five and immediately make a dot in the center of the little circle under call in your scorebook. The call is important. Don't forget to put it down. Now, your discs are three at eight o'clock. Enter the actual hit on the M1 target in your scorebook. Number it one because it's your first shot and you've got to keep track. Then mark the score in the value column under Val. A three. Now, adjust your sight. The chances are you won't get a perfect setting the first time, but make your correction. Use your target dimension. From the center to the edge of the bowl is five inches. Say this hit is six inches long. So you'll want three clicks more of elevation. That's your original 10 clicks and three clicks more. So 13 clicks is the elevation you'll use 
for your second shot. Put it down and change your setting. Now, I estimate that this hit is 12 inches to the left of center. At 200 yards, it'll take six clicks right. Now, you started with one click of left windage and your corrected setting when you've turned your wind gauge six clicks right from the one click left will be five clicks right. Put that down in your scorebook. But you've got to check it before you can be sure. So, you fire your second shot and again call the center ball. <laughs> 